Okay, so let's take a look at how to do question 11, where we're asked to figure out the degree of um, confidence for the following data set. <clears throat> so just need to recap kind of what we're looking at here when we're talking about the degree of confidence. Um, so this is referring to the um, percentage that um, we can state that contains the accuracy for our, uh, our data. So if we look at our normal distribution curve again. Um, if the curve is normally distrib distributed, um, our middle point is going to be our average. Now if we're looking at it in terms of Z scores, that um, population mean is set to always be a zero. So what we're really looking at here is we're looking at a value where we are plus Z some point away and then minus Z some point away. And then the area that this curve is bounded by those values, so I'll just put a line here or shade that in. This area here is equal to our confidence interval. Okay, and so usually we look at this as being <clears throat> like 90%, 95%, okay? Mostly it's usually the whole curve. So we are given um, a numerical interval here, so 61.08 and 62.92. So if we look at what our formula is um, in general for expressing an interval like that, it is x minus z alpha when times by 2 times sigma over root n, okay, is going to be the lower bound around that population mean, and then the upper bound is x bar plus z alpha divided by 2 times sigma all over root n. So we, if we know the number for the lower bound and the upper bound, we also know the formula for the expression. What we really have to just be able to do is calculate what that Z score is going to be because these plus or minus Z scores are actually going to be referred to as our alpha divided by two Z scores. Okay, so if we can get those values there, then we can um, plug that um, function into our TI calculator and we can then calculate what that area would be which is equal to our confidence interval. Okay, so what we need to do is just look at one side of the equation here. Um, we could do both will be, will give us the exact same number, but what we're going to look at doing is just calculating what the Z alpha divided by 2 value is. So we know that this value right here is equal to 61.08 and we know this one here is equal to 62.92 because that's what's given to us for our boundaries. So we can say the following here. 61.08 is equal to um, x bar minus z alpha divided by 2 times sigma all over root n. Okay, and what we're looking to do here is just calculate this Z alpha score. So we need to make sure that we, do we have enough information here. So we do know what X bar is, 62. We know um, sigma here is um, 5, and we know the sample size is 90. So this gives us our following equation. 61.08 is equal to 62 minus Z alpha divided by 2 times 5 all over root 90 okay and then if we work that through we'll just have to convert out some of the decimals um, we will get the following equation here we will get um, well what we can do here is let's subtract 62 um, on each, both sides so 61.08 minus 62 is equal to negative the z alpha over 2 times 5 over root 90. Okay, and I don't, want, I don't need to simplify too much here, yet we can just do it all in one step. Then what we can do is we need to essentially div multiply by root 90 over 5, both sides to cancel out the 5 over root 90 term, and then divide by negative 1. Okay, so then our, so what our expression could be here is um, we're going to take root 90 divided by 5, okay, times divided or times by negative 1, so make that negative, um, times 61.08 
minus 62, and that is going to be equal to our Z alpha score. All right, so if we take our calculator and plug that value into there, we're just after doing that algebra, we're going to have the uh, square root of 90 um, divided by 5 times 61.08 minus 62, do those in brackets, and then we times it by negative 1. So our value here is um, the Z alpha divided by 2 value is equal to 1.74. So what does that tell us? That tells us that um, we are 1.74 units plus or minus on the Z score, which is going to give us our boundaries for our intervals. Okay, so if zero is in the middle, I'm just gonna do this in a different color here, um, our lower boundary is going to be negative 1.74 and our upper boundary will be 1.74. Okay, now this equation here calculated um, just our z alpha value. If we did it with the other side of the of the um, the confidence interval, okay, we would find out that you would get the exact same value. So then our last step here is just to calculate the the area. Okay, so the area is simply given to us by the normal CDF function on our calculator, and that function takes two values, two parameters. It takes the lower value and it takes the upper value. So it's just basically the range in between. So we're going to take negative 1.74 to 1.74. Okay, that's what you'll plug into your calculator. And when you run that through your TI calculator, you will get 0 0.9199. So this is telling us that we have a 92% confidence interval. We'll just round that up, 92% confidence interval with the given set of data. So that's telling us that we can be 92% certain that any value that lies between those two points, 61.08 and 62.92, we're 92% certain that, that that is where um, that mean would be captured inside that value. Okay, so that's how you do those, this question. You're basically just solving for the unknown Z um, alpha divided by two term. Um, they've given you all the other values there, and then you can just run through that calculation. Um, that's how you'll do uh, questions B um, and any of the other ones that are asking for that.